Hi, and welcome back to 19th and 20th Century Philosophy. I'm Matt Brown, and today we're talking about W.E.B. Du Bois and James Baldwin and the context of African-American and Africana philosophy. William Edward Burghardt Du Bois, uh, or just W.E.B. Du Bois, was from Massachusetts. Uh, he was trained at Harvard, first in philosophy with William James, whose pragmatism significantly influenced him, and then in history under Albert Bushnell Hart. Du Bois's work spans philosophy, history, political commentary, fiction writing, and sociology. And in fact, um, he has a good claim on being one of the founding figures of the discipline of sociology. Um, the unifying theme of Du Bois's work is uh, what he called the, the race problem. Um, du Bois more or less invented uh, uh, the, the area of philosophy of race as it exists today, or at least um, was, a, was a key, crucial founding figure. Um, du Bois worked in the first part of his career as faculty at Atlanta University, the first Southern uh, historically black college univer university, uh, or HBCU. In 1910, he left Atlanta University to work full-time at the newly founded NAACP as their director of publicity and research, uh, where his main function was as editor of the Crisis magazine put out by the NAACP. Um, but Du Bois returned to Atlanta in the 1930s. Um, he was caught up in a wave of anti-communist persecution that swept the United States in the 1950s. Um, Although he was cleared of any, um, of any crimes, he uh, suffered significantly at the hands of the federal government. Um, and he eventually died in Ghana in 1963, the day before the March on Washington. Du Bois developed a theory of race as a complex of history, ancestry, and culture, rather than a purely biological conception. Um, he was, uh, some will, will call him a race realist. He believed that race uh, really existed, right? Um, but it's important to qualify that with his um, understanding of race depending on history and culture um, and ancestry and not being purely biological. One of Du Bois's most important and influential ideas um, is the theory of um, double consciousness. It's been taken up by uh, a lot of people. And um, there are, of course, uh, with any suitably complex philosophical concept, some interpretive questions about what exactly um, uh, the double consciousness theory entails. But it involves a kind of um, epistemic, you might say, or experiential asymmetry between black folks and white folks, right? So um, Du Bois's idea is um, not only, okay, so, so white folks only sort of experience the world through their own eyes, right? That through the perspective of their sort of dominant cultural paradigm. Um, but um, black folks in, in America, right, they experience, uh, and, and in many other places as well, I suppose, they experience the world in this kind of double way, not only through their own, their own experience, their own ideas and cultural norms and so forth, but also they experience themselves the way that white people see them, right? Um, they have to, um, just in order to survive in our society, um, be able to adopt that perspective on themselves, which on the one hand, um, is, is, is bad, right? They see the sort of um, a denigrating, a, a negative, negative way that uh, white folks see them. They, they experience themselves in that way, um, as well as, as through their own, their own lenses. Um, but it also means that, in a, in a sense, um, when it comes to sort of the social matters of, of race, um, black folks have an advantage in being able to see things from, from both sides, right? Um, and that's a theme that's taken up in uh, The Souls of White Folks, right? Um, the, the reading for today, which revisits um, a little bit later in, the, in, the in 1920, um, some of Du Bois's central ideas about race and double consciousness in the context of his analysis of white supremacy. Um, and this idea of Du Bois's is, is gonna be one of the uh, many things that contributes to a later notion of, of standpoint theory or standpoint epistemology. Um, 
So that's W.B. Du Bois. Um, we're also talking today about James Baldwin. Um, Baldwin was born in 1924, so he's a little bit you know, further along uh, than some of the other figures we've discussed so far. He was born in Harlem, New York City. Like several important 19th century philosophers, um, but unlike many uh, figures in the sort of rapidly professionalizing 20th century scene, um, Baldwin had no formal education beyond high school, which is not to say he wasn't extremely well educated. Um, he was an avid reader from childhood, uh, a member of various literary and intellectual circles, first in New York and later in Paris, an accomplished writer. Um, but uh, he wasn't trained in philosophy in the way um, that some, some of our uh, more recent figures were. Um, uh, and I think that's, that's like Du Bois working on the margins rather than within the profession is partly explained by, um, by a certain amount of racism and exclusionary attitudes within the profession. Um, at 14, James Baldwin had a kind of religious conversion experience. Um, his stepfather was uh, a minister and he became a kind of junior minister um, whose sermons drew large crowds. Um, he was a very popular speaker, even at a very young age. Um, but already by 17, he grew quite disillusioned with religion and, um, and sort of parted with any, any form of organized religion from there on out. Um, he moved to Paris, um, and uh, although he would travel back and forth in, uh, to the U.S., most notably, he returned to the U.S., to participate in the civil rights movement of the late 1950s and all through the 1960s. Um, he settled back in France in 1970 um, and uh, died in the 1980s. Baldwin was influenced by Du Bois, he refers to Du Bois in a number of places, um, and, and Baldwin himself became another great theorist of the black experience in America, as Du Bois was. Um, Baldwin wrote many essays on race relations, um, and uh, he, he believed in and, and advocated for the great imperative of racial equality and racial integration in this country. On February 18th, 1965, James Baldwin debated William F. Buckley Jr. at the University of Cambridge. They met to debate the proposition, the American dream is at the expense of the American Negro. Baldwin arguing for, Buckley against. Baldwin, by all accounts, absolutely crushed Buckley in this debate, arguing forcefully that the wealth of America was built by black Americans in large part, and it was expropriated from them. Um, and that this is the kind of, um, you know, original sin of America. Um, and this is this sort of um, American apartheid society uh, was was standing in the way of any hope for the American dream. So Baldwin not only argued that um, uh, this this uh, this notion of the American dream for white Americans, this possibility of social advancement and sec and sort of um, security and wealth, was at the expense of um, black people in America. He also argued that the very idea of the American dream was, uh, you know, was was threatened by um, by segregation and inequality um, in, in our apartheid society. And I think there's a lot of relevance to those ideas today. John Dewey, in our reading for last week, called for philosophers to let go of the technical problems of philosophers in order to take up the problems of men, or we should say, I think, the problems of humanity. Um, now, I think more so than any professionalized philosophers in the early and mid 20th century, Du Bois and Baldwin took up that call, as did many other African-American um, and feminist philosophers in America, many of them working outside of the academy until later in the century. Um, and so I think a really important, you know, um, aspect of the philosophical world is happening uh, in these kinds of texts. Um, so that's, uh, that's Du Bois and Baldwin for this week. Um, Next, next week, we're going to shift our focus across the pond, so to speak, uh, into the late 1920s and early 1930s philosophical scene in, in Germany, in the Germanic philosophical world. 
where events were brewing that would have an enormous impact on the shape of professional philosophy um, in not only the Germanic, but also the Anglophone, world, Anglophone worlds in the latter half of the 20th century. Um, so uh, if you have any questions or comments about uh, Du Bois and Baldwin, um, I look forward to discussing those with you on Discord or in the comments of the video um, or uh, in class later today. Um, if uh, otherwise, I look forward to uh, seeing you next week.